Uh, we will have uh, three presentations from Japan, uh, Europe, and uh, the US. Uh, they will be talking about uh, related policy in our field. Now I'd like to introduce uh, the first speaker from Japan. Uh, his name is Mr. Takashi Imamura. He is the counselor for building regulations at Housing Bureau, the Ministry of Japan. After he joined the Japanese Ministry of Construction in 1992, he mainly served in the housing and city bureaus. He has been seconded to UNESCO in Paris and also to the Secretariat for Regional Development Promotion of the Cabinet Office. He also has been seconded also uh, to Takarazuka Municipal Government and uh, other national organizations. He graduated from the University of Tokyo in 1990 and Harvard Kennedy School in 2001. Please start your presentation. Thank you very much for joining. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Takashi Mamura, as I introduced. Uh, on, as, as a member of the Japanese government, I would like also like to welcome you all uh, to Tokyo to this uh, important workshop uh, who, who's participating physically. And I would also like to thank uh, the participant who's, who's uh, joining online. Um, I, as I am introduced right now uh, by uh, Dr. Sawachi, I am in charge of building uh, regulation here in Japan, including building uh, energy efficiency uh, regulations. So now uh, this is uh, today. This is my uh, really privilege to talk about the Japanese policy regarding carbon uh, carbon neutrality in this sector. Uh, so I will uh, briefly uh, talk about the background uh, of the situation. Uh, like other countries, uh, Japan has already uh, declared the carbon neutrality uh, by. Uh, 2050, and we have already submitted uh, NDC national uh, nationally contribute uh, 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 nationally determined contribution to the UN uh, that we should uh, by, by 2030 we should decrease uh, reduce the carbon emission by 46 uh, percent uh, from the level of 2013. However, uh, as you may all know, uh, this March, uh, the synthesis report was uh, submitted by, by the IPCC. And uh, according to this report, oh, just a moment. Okay, uh, to limit the warning, warming to 1.5 degrees uh, without no or without a limited overshoot, uh, CO2, uh, CO2 emissions should be decreased by 48% uh, by, by the year 2030 and 65% by 2035, uh, like that. But this is the compare, comparison uh, from the year 2019. So as I told you, uh, Japanese uh, target was 46% uh, 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 from, the, from the level 2013. 2013. So if you, combat, if you combat the number to the 19, uh, 2090 uh, level, the Japanese target is still uh, around 35% uh, reduction. So it's, it's far behind. I mean, 48% uh, is too, too much uh, uh, compared to Japan. But uh, I have to, we have to face the reality and uh, we have to, I guess, we have to make more, much more effort. And uh, in this document, uh, as you may all know, uh, 
there is some uh, shocking statement like uh, there is a uh, rap rapidly uh, closing window of opportunity to uh, secure light, livable and sustainable for uh, future for all. And the choices and action Im implemented in this decade will have impacts now and for a thousand years. Pretty much shocking, but uh, we, has, we may have to face the reality. Okay. I think it's frozen. It's, oh, <laughs> just a moment. Okay. Uh, so this is the world map and uh, Japan is located uh, uh, in the far east here. I'm talking about uh, Japan right now, and uh, this is a European map. And if you uh, put Jap Japan onto the European map, uh, Japan Japan's uh, latitude is, is run here. And Hokkaido, it's up uh, northern most, uh, is on Italy. And I think uh, most of the European, northern European countries are to the north from Japan. And Okinawa, the southern most of Japan, is down south. Uh, in the in the in the North Africa, and the main island where you are now, Tokyo, uh, is uh, in, in the middle, on the Mediterranean. Uh, it's uh, the mainland is a very long distance from the north north east to the southwest. So, uh, in the in our Energy Efficiency Act. Uh, we have classified uh, the Japan into eight classification, uh, eight category, and Hokkaido is region one, and uh, Okinawa is uh, region eight. Tokyo is uh, region six or five or something. Mm -hmm. And this is the international comparison of housing uh, energy con consumption by use. This is just average, but as you see, Japan uh, it's not. Uh, uh, using using much energy in average compared to Europe or America. Uh, Japan is almost one third of America and uh, almost half of European countries. Uh, this is just average. Uh, but uh, if you look at the, the, the how we uh, the household is using that energy, uh, we are not using that much energy for the heating, but rather uh, we use more energy for the hot water because we take bath, we like it. And uh, and if you compare it with the Jap Germany, uh, Germany's energy consumption of heating is more than five times more than Japan. So Japan's in general, in average, Japan is not uh, using so much, so many, so much energy. I would say. However, if you uh, look at the region by region, like uh, Hokkaido, uh, J all Japan is here and down here. And but uh, if you look at Hokkaido, uh, uh, they are spending so much, uh, so much uh, energy, uh, like like Europe, uh, because because it is cold over there. And this is trends in Japan's uh, energy consump consumption by sectors. And uh, as you see, uh, industrial sector in blue is declining compared to 1990. And uh, transport and sector also has declined uh, compared to 1990 level. Uh, but housing, no, no, commercial sector and house household sector uh, altogether, has been uh, increasing. It is now decreasing on the way, but uh, it is still uh, more than uh, it is still uh, seventy percent, almost seventy percent more uh, compared to ninety ninety level. And this this sector, commercial and housing hold, uh, consists of thirty percent of the total uh, final energy uh, consumption. So we have to. Uh, make so much effort. And this is Japan's reduction targets decided by the Japanese government uh, one and a half year ago. And uh, this uh, commercial sector in green and the household sector in purple uh, are related to housing and buildings. And of course, uh, the high efficiency uh, equipment uh, targets 
uh, are included in this uh, part. And uh, and uh, the one in the in the inside the red border, shall I say, is directly related to the construction, newly construction or renovation uh, target. We have to uh, make so much effort by promoting the the act and renovation. Next, I would like to touch on the requirements of the building. But uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Hasegar has already mentioned uh, we are moving forward step by step. Uh, we have uh, the roadmap set by the Japanese uh, uh, cabinet, uh, and that uh, explains that by the year 2000, uh, 2050. We have to secure the level of net zero energy for housing building on the stock average. So we have to renovate. We have to do the uh, renovation of this, of the existing building also. And we will uh, try to introduce renewable energy in common houses and buildings uh, as long as it is reasonable. And by the year uh, 2030, uh, we are going to require the level of net zero energy for newly constructed housing buildings. So we have already uh, revised the law. And we will uh, try to install solar panels on the 60% uh, of newly constructed detached houses. That's our target. And uh, from, for, for our job uh, for, of, of our ministry, uh, the near future policy of the building energy efficiency is as follows. We have to strengthen uh, the Building Energy Efficiency Act, um, and this, this act has been already revised last year in June, and it will be enforced uh, very soon. Uh, and in this act, we are going to require com 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 uh, compliance with the energy uh, standards for all uh, the new constructed buildings, as Dr. Hasegawa has just told you, including residential building, and starting from two years from now. And we are going to upgrade, up, upgrade uh, the required mandated uh, energy standards to the level of energy, uh, zero energy level by the year 2030. So we are going to make it compliant. <clears throat> uh, no, uh, compliance is obligatory very soon, but uh, this, this uh, energy level is, uh, standard level is uh, rather low. So we have to, uh, upgrade uh, as soon as possible to the zero energy level. And uh, we are going to strengthen the building energy efficiency display system uh, for residential and non-residential, including existing building when they are sold or uh, leased. And this system starts from next year. And we're going to uh, promote the retrofitting of existing building uh, not by the regulations, but by all possible financial incentives, including subsidies, uh, tax cuts, and low interest uh, rate loan. Um, okay. This one shows the original act, uh, Building Energy Efficiency Act, uh, which was uh, enacted uh, in 2015. The, at that time, uh, the only the obligation of compliance was only for non-residential large size uh, building, more than 2,000 square meters. And it was revised, and this is a current uh, act. And now uh, it, it, uh, it is included, uh, the, the medium size non-residential uh, is included in obligation of compliance. But uh, this obligation compliance, I will say, is a very strict one because it is uh, linked with the building permission process. So if you do not comply with the energy efficiency code, you cannot uh, start constructing the building. So it is very uh, strict. We do have other obligation for residential already and, and including a smaller one, but uh, this is uh, uh, what we call the obligation of notification and obligation of efforts and the, and the obligation of architect explanation. And this is not directly linked with the building permission process. So if you do not, even if you do not comply with the energy efficiency standards, you may be able to build a building, but you may be able, 
it is possible that you may be said something from the government uh, instructed, but uh, it is it is not that strict. So we don't call it the obligation, uh, the uh, obli uh, re real obligation. But uh, uh, Japan has already uh, revised the act last year so that all the uh, building, including residential and smaller one, uh, under the obligation compliance, which is linked with the uh, building commission process. So, so that everybody will follow the rule. And energy efficiency standards for Japan uh, consists of two standards. One is primary energy consumption standards, and the other one is envelope, envelope insulation standards. Uh, primary energy consumption is uh, sh shall be equal or less than the standard value. And uh, this uh, process, uh, we also, of course, evaluate the ventilation uh, conservation. And uh, on the right-hand side, envelope insulation standards, a heat loss per surface area of the envelope shall be equal or, or less than the standard value. And but this one, uh, envelope standards only apply to residential buildings. This is the heat comp uh, comparison of heat transmission or insulation, uh, envelope insulation standards. And as you see in the red line, uh, Japan's current uh, standards is very, what can I say, generous or low, not low or generous. It's weak, weak, shall I say. And compared to Europe and uh, American uh, countries. But uh, we are, have introduced the grade five, which is uh, what we call the zero energy level standards uh, on the blue line. And uh, uh, we are going to upgrade, I mean, make it compulsory uh, uh, to follow this grade five level in the near future by, uh, by 2030 at the latest. And we have also established grade six and grade seven. And as you see, we, after we make it comp uh, compulsory uh, for the grade five, in the future, we may be able to promote uh, grade six or grade seven for the next step. But uh, at this moment, we are going to make it compulsory for the grade five. Uh, now I'm talking a little bit about the retrofitting of existing building. Uh, this is uh, Japan's stock for the housing. And uh, as you see, the energy efficiency standards I mean, the housing stock, uh, which comply with the energy exchange standards only uh, is only 13% at this moment in this uh, uh, survey uh, in blue. And we have to, so, so we have to promote the renovation uh, rapidly. And uh, as you see, 29% uh, if were built before the first uh, energy, uh, energy efficiency standard was introduced, which was 1980. So there will be no, almost no insulation. Uh, those 29% uh, we have to tackle as soon as possible. And these buildings, uh, many of them do not meet with the uh, earthquake standards of, as well. So maybe we should demolish and build a new one rather than renovation. And uh, this is a manga or cartoon for inspiring consumers uh, to energy efficient house, houses. And uh, it is typical Japanese, but uh, we have to uh, persuade Japanese people to spend more money on the renovation because they may hesitate uh, to for the renovation. And uh, at the same time, on the right-hand side, we are also all persuading that uh, if you re uh, do the renovation, it is good for your health because uh, there is uh, many evidence, evidence uh, that uh, if you renovate and, uh, uh, and uh, keep the room temperature higher than the 18 degrees centuries, uh, the blood pressure in the morning for the elderly people uh, is uh, has been uh, you know significantly reduced. This is and uh, we have some other uh, many uh, evidences uh, these days, and uh, we are going to you know uh, use such evidence 
uh, to persuade uh, consumers to pay more money for the retrofitting. And the building energy efficiency display system is strengthened uh, next, starting from next year. Mm. And as you, as you are familiar, uh, in the world, uh, you have already introduced many display system in Europe. You have EPC on the left-hand side and neighbors in uh, Australia and Energy Star in America. And uh, I think these, these display systems are uh, really good. I mean, you can use such a display system to, to, to raise awareness of the people, uh, the res residents or citizens. So we are going to strengthen uh, the Japanese system. This is just the image, but uh, we are going to arrange the, 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 the design. Uh, but uh, we are going to, you know, um, uh, incorporate the primary energy consumption, what well, stars and the envelope insulation as well for for for, for uh, housing. In this case, we are going to introduce uh, uh, energy primary consumption display for the non non residential uh, building as well, and we may want to put uh, the information if they are using uh, the renewable energy or you know if it, if it is the zero energy level or something like that uh, anyway i uh, i'm very thrilled to start such a, uh, a new uh, efforts starting next april tackling embodied carbon we should uh, this is a new target but uh, 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 this one shows the communique uh, that was agreed uh, in Sapporo in April this year uh, by the Envi environmental minister. And uh, there is uh, some states regarding the building life cycle, this uh, de uh, decarbonization. Uh, we have to make, we have to think about it uh, with the life cycle approach. And uh, as you see in the middle, uh, uh, the statement said, we will promote, uh, promote uh, reaching zero energy, uh, zero carbon ready or zero emission new buildings, ideally by 2030 or sooner. This is crazy, but uh, uh, they agreed to, make the challenge uh, by 2030 mm, on the minister's level. So we have to uh, hurry up. It is difficult, challenging, but uh, the, this is a spirit. And uh, we also recognize the importance uh, of improved use of sustainable low carbon materials, including wood and end use equipment by using a whole life, uh, life cycle or building approach in design and stuff. So we have to think about the uh, carbon issue with the life cycle approach from now. And uh, this is definition of the World Business Council for Sustainable Development, uh, World Business, okay, uh, it, it stands uh, WBCSD uh, definition. And uh, it, it from the cradle of the building to the grave of the building. And as you see, the uh, from the up up upfront carbon, which means the production of the manufacture, we, we there is a, a real big emission of uh, GH GHG uh, from the manufacturing uh, process and construction. This is upfront carbon, and we have in use uh, embodied carbon. Uh, and in 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 use embryo uh, carbon include uh, the repair and maintenance and replacement of equipment equipment and rehabilit rehabilitation and if you see down there uh, there there is the operation now operational carbon during the in use stage uh, this is our target this has been our target to reduce the in, uh, energy efficiency uh, I mean, reduce, reduce the energy uh, consumption by the by the energy efficiency standards. But uh, I would like to say, from now, this is not uh, 
enough. So we, our current target or next target should be the embodied carbon as well, all together uh, as a whole life carbon. And it is said that uh, operational carbon is currently, or due to this uh, case study, it's like uh, 50% uh, for the operational and 50% uh, is uh, for the embodied carbon. It used to be, someone said, embodied, uh, operational carbon was like 70%, but uh, because of the, the efforts of the, of the energy efficiency, uh, the operational carbon has been decreasing and hopefully the operational carbon will become zero after all the building uh, become uh, zero, uh, zero energy uh, houses or building. But anyway, in that case, uh, there will be uh, the most of the uh, emission will be the, the embodied carbon. So we have to tackle the embodied carbon anyway to realize the real, um, real, real carbon neutrality by 2050. Yeah, ah, oh, sorry. Hmm. So if you look, at the breakdown inside of the embodied carbon. Embodied carbon uh, consists of mainly by structure on the right-hand side, uh, 35, th due to, uh, regarding the case, six case study of the, the Arab, 35% uh, uh, from the structure, and uh, but the other 32% is from the building equipment or building services. So building services is uh, quite a few. Uh, we have to tackle uh, this part also, as well as facade. Uh, and if you, again, the breakdown by stage by stage, uh, product, uh, product and uh, construction stage is like this, uh, you know, uh, structure, structure uh, accounts for 54%. And this is pretty big. It's sixty percent of all the embodied carbon uh, is here, and uh, but you cannot uh, ignore the in-use stage, uh, which is about forty percent of the embodied carbon. And as you see, the big building services, building equipment, is close to sixty percent. This is due to the equipment replacement and the refrigerant to leakage and this etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You have to think about this seriously. Well, Japan's SCCM, I don't have to explain too much, but uh, we have made the effort more than 10 years, but uh, now we have to make it uh, you know, more seriously. We have to think about it. Lastly, I would like to uh, briefly talk about the wooden buildings promotion because wooden Wood is eco materials uh, because uh, it fixed carbon. It fixed carbon uh, four times more than steel or concrete uh, buildings or housing, and it's a good uh, less less energy consumption or less carbon emission, and also recycling and easy to process because it's it's lightweighted and easy to process. And this is Japan's data about the percentage of wooden buildings among new uh, buildings recently. As you see, uh, for the residential building, uh, low-rise residential one, two, or up to three-story residential building, uh, wooden building, uh, most of the, them are wooden building. Uh, well, about more than 80% of low-rise residential buildings are wooden. However, uh, if you look at the four-story or higher uh, residential or non-residential as a whole, uh, uh, there's not so much wooden uh, building so far. So, uh, so in total, uh, the floor area of non-wooden is more than the wooden buildings. 
So uh, we have to we have to think about the immediate challenge to promote the wood use of wood by fathering by further uh, rationalizing the building code, especially the fire protection uh, regulations uh, for high rise and uh, medium high rise buildings. And we have to promote people's better understanding by dispatching information and highlight contribution uh, to carbon neutrality and clear up the negative Im image uh, that wood is weak and combustible. And we also have to reduce construction costs by technological development and business efforts because it's uh, still more expensive. Well, that's about it. I didn't uh, check the clock. I hope it, maybe I <laughs> talked okay. too much. It's okay. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to build my Thank you very <laughs> much for your nice, very wonderful presentation. and. Uh, I think we have uh, only a few uh, few minutes for question and answer. One or two. If you have a question, please raise your hand and uh, use microphone. Thank you very much for a very concise and uh, comprehensive presentations. I'm particularly interested in your displays energy efficiency display system that you you have standardly already developed. So in that system, are you also going to display the indoor environmental conditions? Like, uh, because uh, energy efficiency, we want to want to have energy efficient buildings, but we want to make sure people are comfortable, as you mentioned, like reduced blood pressure and all that things. Yeah. Well, uh, I would say uh, this uh, official uh, uh, display system should be simple so that the people can, uh, you know, Get the information easily, so there is a two level of information: the display, and also we are going to attach the detailed information to the uh, to, to 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 this to such a, uh, a three star, four star, you know, and uh, in that in this second level of the evaluation report, uh, which is detailed. Uh, we can add ma as many information as possible. Maybe we can add the thing, uh, uh, well, like you said, uh, the detailed information. And we are also going to uh, attach uh, how it may affect uh, the health or, you know, the, this, so it's, it's a really uh, reference uh, document, but uh, we, we are going to also dis uh, dispatch uh, you know, disseminate such information as well. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions more? One more only, please. That gentleman. <clears throat> Paweł Bargocki, Technical University of Denmark. Uh, I have actually two questions, and one is follow up on Jensen's question is during the energy retrofit of uh, buildings and new construction, are there any special requirements regarding indoor environmental quality in buildings in Japan that the uh, any retrofit on the new construction has to comply with? Because we be, you are talking only about the energy requirements, but uh, maybe there are specific set of requirements also regarding indoor environmental quality. This is the first question. And because in Europe, the new revision of a directive, the PBD directive, is going to introduce some formal requirements, hopefully, regarding IQ. And then the second one is um, you show the um, U values or transmission coefficients that you will be reducing in Japan. However, uh, the, most of the loss of the energy will be probably for cooling and uh, uh, and also there is a lot of energy that is used for the uh, heating of the water. Uh, can you tell uh, us a little bit about the air tightness of the buildings? Because this is also where the, the loss of the energy will be um, seen. So th this is my other question that I have. Uh, very good question, but it's difficult to answer to the question because, uh, well, no, no problem. Um... We are looking closely to other countries, uh, the, you know, uh, challenge, including the, the directive of Europe, uh, European Union, of course. And uh, I don't know, uh, I don't have sub that much information that uh, what, what you're doing uh, regarding the indoor air quality, uh, 
for the for the new directive, but I I am going to look into it with uh, Dr. Sawachi, <laughs> and uh, maybe Dr. Sawachi will decide where we should where we should <laughs> you know whether we should introduce such such standards or such, such challenge into our system. Maybe uh, I will talk with uh, Dr. Sawachi from now. And the second one, it uh, well air tightness. Uh, it is we do we did have air tightness uh, standard before uh, for the housing, but uh, now we, I think we 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 gave up. We gave up checking the air tightness because uh, there are so many houses, you know construction uh, here in Japan uh, and, and, you know, during the building uh, permission process, not permission, but uh, checking process uh, of the government, the local government. Uh, if you, you know, uh, to have to check the air tightness of the, uh, each house, it, it's, I think uh, the, it was the volume of examination, the, you know, time and, uh, you know, it, it, it was too much. There, there were so many complaints. So now we gave up, uh, you know, such stand, uh, from standards from, from the housing regulation. But uh, as this workshop is also, you know, looking to the air tightness <laughs> uh, uh, on the table. So maybe if uh, Dr. Sawachi is very uh, uh, persuaded, uh, we are going to re think about the uh, air tightness in the future. How about that? <laughs> Sorry, thank you. I would like to make a comment. Yeah, it was a very interesting presentation. And if I compare it with Europe, what I find really interesting is that you mentioned somewhere that by 2050, you want to secure the level of zero energy houses on stock average, and that you count to do it by promoting uh, retrofitting, but not regulations. I think it's a very different approach for Europe, with Europe where we put the requirements on each house. And it's interesting to see how you will achieve it, because I think from a social point of view, your approach, I think, will be easier to accept. Of course, the challenge is to meet the target. But we see in Europe, I think, quite a big risk of opposition that for each house, you must meet this target, and sometimes at a very high cost. So I think it's really interesting to see the challenge in your case, I think, is to, yeah, can you indeed reach the stock average result? But I think from a societal point of view, it's really interesting to see here. Yeah. Thank you. Building, including housing, uh, is very challenging, as, as you all told. And I, I, my understanding is, like, in Europe, uh, in this uh, EPC system, uh, you're going to or France or Denmark or you know some 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 countries uh, have already not Denmark but or Netherlands uh, uh, the the minimum standard uh, for 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 such a EPC so that by by the years you know in three years you cannot say or well, uh, you know this the building if the building is more than the E level or something and uh, you you have to make the renovation and uh, yeah I think uh, that is a really challenging interesting. Uh, uh, thing uh, and uh, after we introduce and strengthen such a uh, uh, display system in uh, starting next year, in the near future we may be able to challenge such a minimum standard uh, for the existing building as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. So I think we have to move to.